Okay, so this question might come off extremely fucking arcane and esoteric. I promise you there's a lot of high-yield stuff to unpackage here. I'm going to be as concise as I possibly can, okay? Starting off with the patient's presentation, this waxing and waning painless neck mass refers to follicular lymphoma, okay? It's the most common indolent non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and it presents as a waxing and waning mass, often over the course of many years, before it quote-unquote transforms and becomes more actively progressive, okay? Um, more, more progressive and aggressive, akin to diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, which is the most common aggressive non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So this is follicular lymphoma. It's going to have a waxing and waning appearance, okay, often as a painless neck mass. And without even reading the rest of the question, if you're able to, if you knew this was the presentation for follicular lymphoma, which most people don't, but if you had that knowledge base, then you'd be able to easily answer this as BCL2. Okay, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Well, let's say you didn't know this description. We can keep reading. And the ladders of regularly shaped bands, you say, no fucking idea what that's referring to. That's actually a very high yield and buzzy description for apoptosis. And then they talk about uh, cast spaces are normally activated in control cell populations. Cast spaces are very high yield and important enzymes that play a role in activating cellular apoptosis. So they're just trying to tell you that uh, these cells in this follicular lymphoma are not undergoing apoptosis uh, when treated with agents that are capable of, induing ca of inducing caspases. When treated with agents that are capable of inducing apoptosis, we don't see that here because we do not see ladders of regularly shaped bands. Once again, Sounds very fucking pedantic, low yield. Uh, it's not. Uh, I promise you this is on the NBMEs for step one, okay? So a couple uh, or a few high yield uh, points that are packaged within there densely in that vignette. BCL2, okay, this is a high yield gene that's upregulated in follicular lymphoma. We have 1418 translocation, that's also high yield to know. Uh, but BCL2 is an anti apoptotic molecule, okay? Extremely high yield. BCL2, follicular lymphoma, and it's an anti apoptotic molecule. All right, 1418 translocation. Uh, I, I did write here a C mic as a wrong answer for choice D, C mic or C mic. This is Burkitt lymphoma, 814 translocation, most of the time, can be 2 8 or 822. That does show up on US simile, lower yield, but 814 translocation, C mic or C mic, and C uh, or, or this gene C mic is a transcription factor. Okay, so BCL2 anti apoptotic molecule, follicular lymphoma, 1418 translocation, C mic, 814 translocation, Burkitt lymphoma. All right, transcription factor. So uh, you don't really need to know anything about the histo for BCL2 and follicular lymphoma. You do need to know, of course, Burkitt lymphoma is your classic starry sky appearance where you have a background of uh, lymphocytes and interspersed macrophages that are actually undergoing apoptosis. The USMLE can show you the starry sky appearance for Burkitt lymphoma, have an arrow pointing to one of the macrophages, and the answer is apoptosis. And you're like, what the fuck? It's just, it's weird, but I'm telling you it's on the exam. Uh, looking at some of the other answer choices, BCR2, or sorry, BCRABL. This is your, of course, Philadelphia chromosome, 922 translocation. That's CML, chronic myelogenous leukemia. Uh, BCRABL forms an oncogenic tyrosine kinase, all right? And there's a lot to talk about in CML. I've made other questions on it. Um, and, of course, um, you can treat with a matinib, and that causes fluid retention. Matinib will, will, is an antagonist or uh, a drug that targets that BCRABL uh, tyrosine kinase. CCND1, don't choose fucking weird answers. Uh, they're almost always wrong, okay? But that's the gene that codes uh, cyclin D1, which plays a role in mantle cell lymphoma. 
Okay, you're not going to get asked that on the exam, very unlikely, but 1114 translocation is uh, mantle cell lymphoma and cyclin D1, but CCN D1 is the gene. And uh, I already talked about CMYK. EWSR1, FLI1. This is actually Ewing sarcoma. I've seen this in uh, a question on NBME. So they've listed this in the vignette, this translocation. So this isn't uh, obscure. Uh, Ewing sarcoma, of course, is your pediatric uh, bone cancer that uh, will demonstrate on a bone scan increased uptake in the diaphysis or diaphysis of the bone. Can present similarly to osteomyelitis with bone pain and fever. And you're like, hmm, that sounds like an infection though. How the fuck is this cancer? It is. Okay, so pediatrics, Ewing sarcoma. So it's a, it's actually an 1122 translocation. Uh, this EWSR, EWSR1 FLI1. It's an 1122 translocation causing the Ewing sarcoma. Um, you can get onion skinning appearance on histo, small uh, blue cells. Don't confuse this 1122 translocation with Ewing of Ewing's with the 22Q11 deletion, which causes the George syndrome. Okay, so you can do a fucking 90 minute presentation here, a lot to talk about. But your take home is that this vignette of waxing, waning appearance, painless mass, uh, your lymphadenopathy that's going to be uh, follicular lymphoma, and it's BCL2 anti apoptotic molecule 1418 translocation. That's it.